Welcome back. Well, the morning might uh, see a bit of a cautious start considering global queues and this big news from the RBI that's come in. Let's boil this down to stocks then. Our entire team is standing by with the CNBC TV 18 list of top stocks to watch out for today. And first off the crease, of course, is who else? But Abhishek, big, big news coming in last evening. Abhishek, fill us in. Uh, well, RBI has decided to increase the risk weight assets on unsecured lending mainly or on consumer uh, lending. Uh, so, in 2019 September, you know, RBI had reduced risk weight assets on personal loans or, uh, you know, consumer loans uh, to about 100% from 125%. Uh, so, this time around, they have uh, put back the consumer loan risk weight assets uh, back to 125% uh, versus 100% that they had it earlier. Uh, the biggest part is that the the credit card, uh, you know, that segment has seen massive increase in risk weight assets. It will be now at 150% from 125% that was there earlier. <coughs> Even for bank loans to NBFCs, uh, that risk weight assets have been increased to 125% versus 100% earlier. So amongst banks, you know, those who have a large exposure to uh, credit card or unsecured lending is the likes of RBL Bank, IDFC First Bank, ICICI Bank, where the personal loan and credit card loans have been growing really on the stronger side. For NBFCs, uh, the unsecured loans, uh, you know, X of MFI loans and uh, the same loans for banks that they have mentioned in terms of gold, vehicle, etc. Uh, the risk weight uh, will increase to about 125%. For credit cards, uh, especially for NBFCs, they'll attract RWA of 125% from 100% that they had earlier. So the big impact will be for SBI cards, given the fact that 100% of the book consists of credit cards. Aditya Billa Capital, Sundram Finance, Shiram Finance are the other lenders that you would need to watch out uh, for in trade today, given the impact of, you know, rise in RWA or risk weight assets for these lenders. Back to you. Okay, all right. Abhishek, thanks a lot uh, for that. So, banks and financial names in particular, namely, uh, you know, SBI cards will be under pressure today. But let's hop across to Vivek. He's here to tell us about JSW Infra. Hey, Vivek, morning. Well, good morning. You know, it's a significant development as far as JSW Infra is concerned. The company has received the letter of award, something that the company was alluding to even in our earlier conversation with them. Uh, now, the company will be developing the Kenny port in Karnataka, and the project cost is estimated at over 4,100 crore. Now, this particular port is, uh, you know, will have a capacity of close to 30 million tons per annum. Uh, the development, uh, you know, the concession agreement is for 30 years, and along with that, this particular project uh, will actually help the company go ahead and meet its 300 million tons per annum uh, capacity target that they have kept by 2030. Currently, you know, the company has close to 158 million tons per annum. So this is a significant addition to its cargo handling capacity as far as JLW Infra is concerned. The other stock on our radar is HJVN, some positive news flow coming in there. The company has received a PPA, a power purchase agreement, for a 200 megawatt wind project with SECI, which is the Solar Energy Corporation of India. So the company go ahead and boots its renewable energy portfolio. The wind portfolio of the company now stands at 497.6 megawatts. When you're talking about the tariff of this particular PPA that has been signed, it is rupees 3.24 per unit. So again, some positive news flow coming in for HJVN as well. Okay, Vivek, thanks very much uh, for that. Uh, well, delivery is the next one. There is a share sale scheduled. Uh, SoftBank, which is an investor, uh, is uh, planning to uh, sell a portion of what it holds. Mangalam is here with details. Mangalam. Well, that's correct. You know, so what we understand is that uh, SoftBank is planning to sell stake worth nearly $150 million in uh, delivery via a block deal. If that happens, it would be shedding around 4% of the stake that the company holds. And uh, what we also understand from the term sheet is that it would be at a discount of anywhere between 0 to 2.5% of yesterday's uh, closing price. That was 414 odd rupees. But remember, yesterday's closing price itself is about 10% away from its 52-week uh, high and a lot lower from its record high as well. Uh, the question is, is this uh, one of many or, uh, you know, this will just uh, uh, be one for now? We have SoftBank, which holds about 14.5% stake in the company as per the latest reporting. So we see this deal, deal though, uh, go through and thereafter, given the small discount, maybe the stock uh, recovers after opening in the red. But the question, the overhang of the sale will remain. Okay, let's see how this one plays out. Mangam, thanks very much for alerting us about it.
Uh, Sonal is watching out for a bunch of stocks as well. Sonal, morning. Which ones are they? Good morning. Well, first stocks on my radar today. Let me start with TVS Motors because now they have entered into a strategic partnership with Emil Frey for key European markets. It's basically a distribution contract or partnership that they have entered into for the market that is in Europe. Uh, we have DCX6 Systems, uh, which approved fundraise yesterday, and it is up to 500 crore rupees. It would be via QIP or private placement, but the details are yet to be known apart from this. JSW Steel. Uh, Considering the demand and supply situation of iron ore in the country, they've gone ahead and withdrawn their application for the final mine closure plan submitted on 1st September 2023. So that stock is on our radar. And Brigid will be developing 2 million square feet uh, with a gross development value of 2100 crore rupees. This is in their core market, Bengaluru itself. Uh, so we'll need to see more details here, but looks like a good uh, development here. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh for uh, you know, joining in and giving us uh, all of that. Well, let's hop across to Manisha. The big Q overnight was the fall in crude oil prices. Manisha joins us. Tell us about that as well as MCX. Morning, Manisha. Morning, and thank you for that, Nigel. I'll start with the crude oil prices first. And we did see a 5% decline in the overnight market. The crude with this is now trading at a four-month low, and this is going to be a fourth straight week that you are seeing the crude prices in the red. Well, we have seen the global demand and rising supplies that's weighing on. The U.S. inventories and the U.S. production are near record highs, and then the Chinese oil refining has seen a decline. The kind of data that we've seen coming from Europe and U.S. also have been slightly on the weaker side, and that continues to weigh onto the crude oil prices. But the big move yesterday also came in for the gold prices. While the global market saw half to 1% of gain at one point in time at MCX, the gold prices hit an all-time high at 61,914. That lasted just perhaps a minute or two, and then we saw the prices decline yet again by nearly 1,100 rupees. Well, traders that I've been speaking to find this move as an aberration. There have been complaints, they told us, since afternoon about placing orders on the exchange. And this movement of 1,000 and 1,200 rupees in a matter of minutes, they say, has triggered many stop losses for some as well. The other thing is the volumes, which were also high during these trades. So I have reached out to the exchange over uh, in, in the last night, and we are still waiting to hear back from them. But this is a big move that we saw come in for uh, the gold prices on the exchange. Okay, that's an interesting development, Manisha. Uh, we will, of course, keep touching base with you through the day. Let's see if there's any clarity from the exchanges on that move in gold. Uh, for the time being, let's uh, quickly recap our list of stocks to watch, uh, and uh, quite a few of them. Starting first up will be, of course, the ones that have positive news flow, those include JSW Infra, SJVN, TVS Motors, DCX, DCX Systems and JSW Steel, Brigade Enterprises as well. On the green side, stocks that have negative news flow around them are Financials, Delivery, ONGC and MCX. Okay, <clears throat> take a short, uh, quick commercial break here. We'll be joined by uh, Ajay Bodke, uh, who will... Uh, Take us through what he's making of things, uh, specific stocks, banks and financials, of course, top of mind. A little later after that, we'll also have the management of Birla Corporation who will discuss their second quarter earnings. Uh, so stay tuned. Lots coming up.